Look at LSU and their three-headed monster offensively. The freshman Cam Thomas, Trenton Watford, an incredible sophomore, and maybe the best point guard in the SEC in Javante Smart. But not to be outdone, the Mississippi State backcourt is absolutely relentless with Molinar and DJ Stewart coming off arguably the best offensive performance of the season. 29 points, road win at South Carolina. And his coach called DJ brilliant in that one. This is a very good sight for LSU fans. It's another weapon returning to the lineup. Darius Days is back. Suffered an ankle injury last week against Texas Tech and missed the Alabama game. And, Dane, when you look at these numbers, this guy staying healthy the rest of the way could be the difference between a postseason bid or not. He's the glue. When he's healthy and he plays well, they win. When he's not, they lose. It's that simple. Home whites for Mississippi State. The road purple and gold for LSU. Tigers trying to reverse course. They have lost four of their last five, albeit against very uh, tough competition. Their scoring has faltered a bit in the last couple of weeks as Mississippi State will strike first with Iverson Molinar. Here's a look at your LSU starting five with the return of Darius Days, but no Mwani Wilkinson. He is unavailable with the flu, not COVID, but with the flu. He is out. Andre Hyatt gets his fourth start of the season. And for Mississippi State, they are staying with this three-guard lineup, the emergence of Davon Smith. And as always for the Bulldogs, they have the size advantage, 6'11", Abdul Adu, and 6'10", Tolu Smith, as they drop the triple. And, and that's where LSU likes to switch everything. So they're going to live with the fact that their big is guarding D.J. Stewart, Mississippi State star guard. So see if Mississippi State can't continue to take advantage of what could be a mismatch. Thomas is able to bank that one in. The freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, who's made a big splash in the SEC this year, averaging 22 a night. I'll throw a little 2-2-1 two, two, pressure on here. Smith finds a seam and lays it up and in. Well, Smith's going to be really important for Mississippi State, not just scoring the ball like he did in the paint, but taking care of it and valuing the basketball. This is a turnover-prone Mississippi State team. Good job handling the trap. First possession for Smith. You have gotten away with a walk right there. Andre Hyatt, Javante Smart, he won't go. The other development coming in, LSU without one of their rim protectors off the bench. No Sharif O'Neal available tonight he did not travel with the team of course he had the foot injury that they apparently are still taking a, a closer look at this week Molinar off the bounce to a do and a foul I bet that's twice now that Mississippi State has exploited the switch with Darius Days again who's not a hundred percent so you have your big man who's not a hundred percent trying to close out on two of the best scoring guards in the SEC Advantage Mississippi State on both occasions. A due to the line, a 69% free throw shooter. And when you talk to Ben Howland this week, that was one of the things he stressed was being able to attack the switches that they knew they were going to see as you check out the bio blast for a due from Nigeria. He's already a graduate. And uh, in the SEC this year, fourth in blocks. Any points they get from him are gravy. He's averaging only about five per game. Open look for days, knocks it down. And that's what he does for this LSU team. The spacing and the pick and pop ability that they just don't have a replacement for if he's not in the game or if he's not healthy. Knocked loose and a foul on Trendon Watford. As you see, Will Wade now in his fourth season with back-to-back 20 win campaigns highlighted by that 2019 SEC championship. They missed out on a big opportunity last weekend when their Florida game was postponed. They are hoping to plug in another opponent middle of the week next week. And when we talked to Will Wade today, he said, hey, it's pretty simple. We need wins. They're at 11 and 6. They got to 
boost the number on the resume, and that runner is good from Molinar again. And you saw the quad one wins that he's had at LSU, and he understands the value of them and stresses to his team, says, hey, if you just look at Mississippi State as 11-9, and nine, you're not going to be ready to play. you got to look at them. This is a quad one opportunity for LSU, which they desperately need to stay on the right side of the bubble. Bracketology this morning has LSU in as a 10 seed, one of six SEC schools. Mississippi State right now on the outside looking in, but they do have opportunities, including tonight, to pick up some wins, and the floater is good for LSU. That's going to be a fun one to watch right there. DJ Stewart not only great on offense, but a top perimeter defender for Mississippi State. Cam Thomas, the freshman, going right at him early, though. Boy, I like it when you call it right from the gate, uh, Dane. They're, they're starting out a combined eight of nine shooting here in the first half. Yeah, well, we, we hedged our bet a little bit. We went ahead and just, like, picked five stars that could potentially play well. So <laughs> <laughs> if they all play well, even better, though. Put back is good from Tolu Smith. He's the guy that has emerged as that third scoring option this year for the Bulldogs. Best offensive rebounder in the league as well. LSU better find Smith. Smart off the cross. Thomas kicks it back out to Days. I do with the one-handed snare, and they'll push tempo. Molinar. Behind the back, into the lane, and rattled in and out there by Watford. Days trying to chase it down. And it will go to Mississippi State. Bulldogs 13 to 9 over L 13 to 9. Mississippi State over LSU trying to build off of a nice win against South Carolina on Saturday. One of the best performances of the, of the season for DJ Stewart. He was phenomenal in this game on the road. This is a South Carolina team that prides itself on the defensive end, but they had no answer for the sophomore. In transition, he hits the three. He just shows what a three-level scorer he is. He can get you at the rim. He's got a nice touch around the paint, 15-footer. He's got kind of a little old-school style to it with the mid-range jumper, but don't sleep on him. This kid can get up, too. Don't be surprised if he doesn't finish above the rim a couple times in this one. Best effort of the SEC season for DJ. Big improvement, 11 points per game, better than he was a year ago. Way off on the three, second chance, got it. That's Derek Fountain, he's been a find off the bench the last week or so. Yeah, no highlight real plays for Fountain, just solid. And doesn't make mistakes, and little things like that is what's allowed him to not only get in the rotation, but stay there. The nine points, a couple of blocks in that South Carolina win. Watford off the fake, goes to the right, and uses the glass. He's so good. When they play through him at that elbow, his shot hadn't been falling that much lately, a little inconsistent, but if he can get it going, he can just be an absolute terror and beast down in that paint. Trying to hang early after Mississippi State scored on its first six possessions of the game. All five starters scored before the first media timeout. Including this guy right here, Iverson Molinar. Shot clock is under 10. He'll launch. Boy, it would be big for LSU if they can compete on the glass against the best rebounding team in the SEC. Thomas. Oh, nice feed inside, but no finish there from Javian Davis. Thomas on the counter, takes it himself, and one. Thomas takes it himself is something you might say 25 times <laughs> in this game. I mean, but he, he is a scoring sensation, and he is he thinks next play every single time. A miss does not bother him, and look at him in tack mode. Takes the contact, finishes off the glass. What a confident freshman. And he's earned the right to get the shots that he does. And Coach Wade says he's an absolute... Jim Rat, he's a film junkie. He has no hobbies. He just loves ball. 
And obviously he's a, he's a high volume guy, so the focus has, has been on trying to get him as clean a looks as possible. So he settled back into a 2-3. Adu. Oh, off the fake and got another foul call. That's Josh Gray, the 6'11 freshman from Brooklyn. LSU and Will Wade forced uh, due to the injury and the illness to use guys that haven't played a ton of minutes this year. Uh, probably a little bit too excited to play there. You got to stay solid. You built the wall down low. Uh, Adu, not known as a one-on-one -on -one player for Mississippi State. You, you like the matchup. You can't, can't bail the offense out. Josh has only played in five games, 18 minutes total this year. So with the uh, injury to Sharif O'Neal, he may be called upon a lot more tonight with that big lineup that the Bulldogs bring. Beth, notice they will play zone when Gray's in the game because they can't switch as much one through five. Tolu Smith gets that one up and in. He's got four. Just simple play, so that, that's a 50-50 ball. We saw Fountain with the put back down low. That was kind of a loose ball scramble. LSU's just got to have a sense of urgency and, and corral those. Watford got it, Mac. It, it's a bit of a scramble. Thomas will try and clean it up, and he does with the deep three. Well, this is what keeps Coach Ben Howlin from Mississippi State up at night. He said, look, uh, Thomas is a volume shooter, as you said, Beth. And he can take some bad ones, but he can make some bad ones, too. Off the mark from Stewart. That's a couple of deep ones he's spin off. Smart floats one up and in, and LSU grabs the lead. They can score in a hurry, can't they? I mean, they just got so many guys. Watford hits one, then Thomas, then Smart. That's exactly the three-headed monster that LSU brings to the table on offense. Tolu Smith, and he gets the kind bouncer two back in front for the Bulldogs. Both teams shooting it well here through the first uh, eight plus minutes. Switch on the ball screen. Smart's got a mismatch and then dribbles back into Fountain. Watford's three. A good call, Beth. I mean, he had the mismatch. Javion Davis on Javante Smart, and for whatever reason, they ran help right into it. Well, how about the moxie and Fountain? <laughs> you talk about staying ready for your opportunity. Young fella playing with some confidence. 6'9", freshman out of Holly Springs, Mississippi. Ben Howland used the word he emerged for us on Saturday. He's continuing to emerge, and of course, as soon as we talk him up, the first turnover of the day for Mississippi State. Ooh. Smart. Oh, nice wrap on the left side. Unbelievable how he just has the, the pace to step through under control, get to the other side of the rim. Incredible footwork by Smart. 6'4", junior from Baton Rouge. The other thing with these scorers that we highlighted, Dane, they, they play a ton of minutes all amongst the leaders in the SEC, so we'll see a lot of them tonight. They stay out of foul trouble. To the left side, Smith. He's attacking the youngster, Gray. And, and both these teams are capable from three, but they are better from two than three, so no surprise, 12-12 in terms of paint points right now. Smart took a bump and a foul. About the freshman Fountain putting together several good games in a row. Ben Howland's calling his number. And Fountain saying, I got you, coach. Here's three for you. How about our Thursday night college basketball doubleheader for you on ESPN? Iowa State and Kansas Cyclones in search of their first Big 12 win Thursday at 7 Eastern. And then out west, Oregon and Arizona State. 
9 Eastern on ESPN. The Ducks, one of those bubble teams right now. Beth, I'll throw it back to the Big 12 there. I know it's we're, we're getting further away from that SEC Big 12 challenge, but I, I think that's been such a great benefit to the SEC and now starting to become to the Big 12 as well. I think it's all about context. And, you know, are you a bubble team that needs a quality win like LSU? Then you love the opportunity. That was well done. Josh LeBlanc off the takeaway. Yeah, the Georgetown transfer. I mean, this, they've been waiting for him to wake up a little bit. Maybe that'll get him going. Uh, that's the type of emotion and passion they want to see him play with. And Mississippi State's got to be careful. This is where they've had issues is these half-court traps several times during the course of the year. Got to make sure this doesn't start a downward trend. Take care of the basketball. How about 47 turnovers in their last two games? That's what Ben Howland would love to avoid. They've got work yeah, to do if they want to continue his trend of uh, three consecutive 20-win seasons, back-to-back 10-win -back campaigns in the SEC under Ben Howland. Davon pulls up in the lane. That won't go. LeBlanc has it. And then Smart's pass. One. Here's a look at Ben now in his sixth season. Of course, uh, from his UCLA days, those three trips to the Final Four. 25 seasons now as a head coach over 500 wins. He's just one of the pieces to the SEC's rebuild of their basketball brand. I mean, I, I started with the SEC Network back in 2014, and it was just Kentucky, Florida, and everybody else. Mm -hmm. And when they started making hires like Ben Howell and, um, and, and others across the SEC, that's what's gotten the reputation back to where the SEC's proud to highlight their basketball teams. Mm -hmm. The turnover from Watford. Yeah, right now the SEC uh, six teams projected in the latest bracketology. Alabama, Missouri, Tennessee, Florida, Arkansas, and LSU. Of course, the Crimson Tide have separated themselves a bit. They finally did falter for the first time in league play last week. Uh, but there are Lenardi's SEC projections with Alabama still on the two line. Maybe not the quantity of teams that the SEC would like to have. You'd like to have seven, eight, maybe even nine. But I think the quality is really there. And LSU is showing as a 10 seed. But if they can get their act together, uh, there's nobody that wants to play against the talent that the Tigers have. Mississippi State has cooled off now on the offensive end. Off the drive. Days will try and follow. The tip, no good. Multiple chances for LSU, and they're going to get another one. Under eight here in the first half. All even at 24 apiece. Even at 24 apiece, LSU very much on the bubble. They're two and five against uh, quad one. Their net right now is at 41. They still have Tennessee and Arkansas to come. And their projection right now is a 10 seed. And when we talked to Will Wade today, Dane, he he loved the minutiae. He, he says, I, I don't have a guy to dive into the numbers. I love doing it myself. And uh, even the possibility of, you know, whether they might need to add teams to their schedule if open dates appear. Yeah, he, he's a scheduling whiz. He knows how to work the numbers. But bottom line is you, you can't work them if you don't get wins. And they need some quality wins. They don't have bad losses. Nice shot by Watford there in the paint. But, uh, you know, and you can't take any game for granted. You never know when you're going to have a disruption in your program. You might have to miss three games in a row and miss out on some opportunities. So... Uh, the urgency is certainly there for LSU. And he said it's, you know, you, you can't avoid it in this day and age with all the social media, with the Sports Center highlights. The, all the guys know the situation. So, you know, we talk about it and, and use that as part of our motivation. 
Yeah, I think LSU's got to embrace, uh, and I think they do to a degree. They, they're kind of the bad boys of the SEC. Like they, they flex a lot after they make big baskets. They talk a little trash. They get some technicals. But the national <laughs> perception with look, there's been investigation in their program, so people look at them with a, you know, kind of a dark eye a little bit. And I think you got to embrace that and, and, you know, have a swagger to you that it's the whole world against us. And boy. They are a different team with number four in purple on the court, Darius Days. Days with six points and three rebounds. That's exactly what you don't want if you're Mississippi State. If one of those guys gets 20, you're okay. But if they all start turning that direction, you got a big problem. They have held Mississippi State scoreless for about three minutes here. Uh, 2 2 1 again, looking for a trap or a deflection. Stewart just three points so far. Molinar only with four offensively, and that one's tipped away from behind on the run and the lay in. Javante Smart. That is a heck of a pass by Gaines. I thought he took a risky thread the needle look in transition, but on the money. 11 unanswered now for LSU. Seems Mississippi State just for... unorganized on this end. They, they got to take care of the ball. The skip pass is there. Make good decisions. Fountain finds some space off glass. And that ends the scoring drought of over three minutes. You got to penetrate that zone. And that drive is there against LSU. Thomas, nice hesitation and the change of pace for the lay-in. Hey, you're all over. It is the change of pace, his patience. He just waited for the defense to react to the pop of days, and that opened up the lane. Tolu Smith gets two down low. Watford will try for three. I don't like that one, Beth. Uh, you can get that at any point in the shot clock, and Watford has not been stopped going to the rack, so keep going to it. Mississippi State, they cannot get Stuart and Molinar on track here in the first half. Cam Thomas. Oh, another quick on the three look there for LSU. If you're LSU, when you pass to Cam Thomas, don't you just go crash the boards? Like, quick cutting, right? Uh, he's going to get it up. and uh, He should. He's got. He's a great scorer, but go crash. Another well, three from nine, for nine from downtown. They've got 20 points in the paint. But those last two uh, shot selections allowing Mississippi State to hang. And now they're within two. Fountain with another bucket. Just as we predicted, Fountain and Smith combining for 20 for Mississippi <laughs> State. <you know? laughs> but somebody's got to step up. The focus is on Stewart and Molinar. Well done by those two. Watford steps back. That's a tough shot over the 6'10 Tolu Smith. Hey, he's, he's bailing the defense out. They haven't stopped him going to the rim. Molinar gets bumped on the drive by Eric Gaines. Uh, I think we just heard Coach Wade instructing that to his team. That's three straight jump shots. There's the long three from Thomas. Watford's had two perimeter shots. Again, this is a team that's Better from two in the paint than they are from the perimeter. I think LSU's going to hustle on uh, substitute here, get Josh Gray back on the court. And this is where he steals some minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry about that. This is where the media timeout's coming up next, so see if you can't get Wad for a little extra breather here. Still, still a couple minutes. Well, they've also got Gray on the court playing some man right here. See if they can figure the switch out.
Tough pass to handle. Shot clock winding down. Monar had it knocked loose and does not get it up in time. Good coverage by the LSU D. Cam Thomas. Yo, man. You should currently a projected one seed in the latest bracketology. And then an SEC showdown, Tennessee at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge to face LSU. The ball's handily in front of Georgia tonight in the second half. That one Saturday, 2 Eastern on ESPN. Also, of course, on your app. Keon Johnson, the reigning freshman of the week for Tennessee. Made himself a poster tonight. Do you still make posters or is it screenshots or avatars, could whatever? Be, but he, he could got be one. memes or gifts. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know. I've already moved down to the TikToks, Dane. I, I, you know, it's a whole new world that is open. I know. Up. I'm just trying to keep up with you. <laughs> you are an empty nester now, so you have time to kind of dive into those things. Yes. But you as you know, the, the only way to make much. those things, the only way to make those things uncool is when the parents get involved. So. <laughs> Watford can't get that one to go, but at least they do get back into the lane. They had been settling for some jump shots, and that allowed Mississippi State to work their way back in it. How about this guy so far tonight? Derek Fountain off the bench. What a great read by a dude. Gets the ball deep in the post, but stays patient, finds a shooter. 13 points on five for five shooting. He's got three triples. Yeah, this guy had nine straight DNPs before playing five minutes mm. in the Big 12 Challenge, but was practicing well, played well on a loss at Arkansas. Gets 29 minutes at South Carolina, and it, this guy's not looking back and steps into this thing with such confidence. Again, great read by Adu. Kicks it out. Man, he, he has been the star in this first half. Sparking an 8-0 run to put the Bulldogs back on top. After they had fallen behind by seven, Cam Thomas. Oh, tough on the spin on the perimeter. Hits it. You know, Cam Thomas goes to the NBA. That move right there might be on his highlight film when he gets drafted. I mean, that to show his NBA style and what he can do. Yes, he can score at the rim. Yes, he can shoot the three. Brilliant at the free throw line. But that mid-range game is something else. And he just put that move on one of the best defenders, perimeter defenders in the SEC. If I'm not mistaken, that was DJ Stewart guarding him. A little shake. Whoop, whoop. Come on back here. With the fade. That's tough, folks. You can't teach that. Well, 13 points in 17 minutes on 6 of 9 shooting, and that 2-2-1 has forced another turnover. Yeah, forced or unforced? I mean, that's... It's got Mississippi State uncomfortable, but you got to be able to make a guard-to-guard -guard pass without the defense even pressuring you. That's now five turnovers in the last seven minutes for Mississippi State. And the three for Darius Days. That's his, his third. Has been so good. You're right. The pick and pops has changed their offense, but he also has opened up things for others. You can only hope to contain this guy, Fountain. Yikes. <laughs> he's got 15. He's perfect from the floor. LSU players are looking at Coach Wade like, yo, we barely covered this guy in the film room. <laughs> Did somebody want to give me a scout, scout report on, on 20? <laughs> and there he is with a rebound. 20 and White is having himself a night. Molinar staggered his feet and turns it over. And this is the tough part for teams that struggle in a specific area. You can... You can stop the bleeding for a while, but can you do it for 40 straight minutes? And right now, it's Mississippi State's turnovers. They, they turn it over 21% of their possessions on the year. That's towards the bottom of the NCAA. Started the game off well, but then you go through these stretches where you just have these empty possessions, and it's so tough for a team to cover up their weakness for 40 straight minutes. Final minute and a half of this first half of play. Couple of teams, middle of the pack right now in the SEC. 
Trying to improve their standing for the postseason and the charge taken by boy. guess who? Hey, he's coachable too. Coach Allen said, hey, <laughs> Texas Tech drew five charges on LSU attacking and they're floating. They don't come to a jump stop in the lane. We got to get in there and take a charge. And who's in there? That's not a senior and upperclassman. That's your freshman, Derek Fountain. What a first half. And he drops it off there. Good swat to reach in by LeBlanc to knock it loose. And what a great example of just sticking with it. I mean, most players these days, you get nine straight DNPs, you're not playing well. You, you hang it up and talk about transferring. Let me start looking at the portal and all those other things. Fountain just went back to work. And credit Ben Howland for, for being willing to reward him midseason where it can be tough to find minutes. Here he goes again. He check is short, and they lose it. He's already got his career high in the first half with 15 points. Of course, he had only scored 25 all season. Too often to compete in that <laughs> octagon. I don't think that's going to happen for him. But He's getting ready for baseball season. Yeah. Uh, as it relates here, look, Fountain's been the story for Mississippi State. However, if this game continues to get played in the 80s, I think that's the LSU's favor. If you're Mississippi State, you can't rely on the freshman to score 30 for you in this game. You either got to stop LSU or get your star Stewart and Molinar going in the second half. And Molinar and Stewart have not been themselves. Javante Smart hits the triple. That's the fifth of the first half for LSU. And that's Watford. Watford did not settle. He attacked the paint, and he brought help, and he's one of the best big man passers in the league. Top 10 in assists despite being a four and five man. They can save it for one right here. Final seconds, the step back. Davon Smith hits the tough shot right in front of the LSU bench. Two-point game at the half tonight. LSU with the two-point advantage over Mississippi State as we get set to start the second half. How about a look at Cam Thomas, Dane? Yeah, I think LSU got what they wanted offensively in the first half, and it's easy. Just get the ball to Thomas with those one-on-one -on -one moves or Javante Smart. They get the matchups they want. It's about spacing, a lot of one-on-one -on -one plays, but strategically set up in a right position. And Derek Fountain, the star freshman, emerging from Mississippi State, and Tolu Smith getting it done in the paint. So these two guys really stepped up as Molinar and Stewart struggled to find their offensive rhythm as LSU tried to take away Mississippi State's top scorers, but the other guys answered the bell. There's a look at the two leading scorers tonight, both freshmen, 13 for Thomas, 15 for Fountain. And uh, Molinar and Stewart, the two leading scorers for Mississippi State, combined for just seven points of three uh, in three of nine shooting. Let's see if they can get things going for the Bulldogs. And for LSU, as we've talked about, a bubble team in need of wins. This would be another quad one win for them. Coming in tonight with a net in the 40s. So work to do for the Tigers. Right now they are in. According to the latest bracketology, is a 10 seed, and they come out of the locker room and get the bucket right away for Andre Hyatt. I love the play out of halftime. They force the ball down in the paint to Watford. They're getting good action and good shots when they get it inside the paint. Hyatt got the start tonight with Mwani Wilkinson out with the flu. No Sharif O'Neal available for... LSU tonight either. Molinar. I think that might be the third air ball of the night for Iverson. The quick counter the other way off the front iron from Thomas kept it alive. Watford looking for the open man. It's Hyatt again. Want to try to drive a bad pass. Don't shoot those throwing at your feet, but you're right. I mean, between Stewart and Molinar, they have missed wide, short a couple times. I think the switching of LSU has really bothered them, and then switching to zone 
at times not get, letting them get in a rhythm. Here's Stewart coming off of that 29-point performance against South Carolina. His best of the year in SEC play. Molinar from the elbow still cannot dial it in. As a dude tips it to himself, gets another possession for Tolu Smith. And that is a dual do. I mean, that's what he does. Just a glue guy for this team. Offensive rebound, right pass. Gets their team to two, but days with a quick answer. Darius back in the lineup after he missed the Alabama game with the ankle injury he suffered in that Big 12 challenge against Texas Tech. Davon Smith with contact muscles it up and in. I think that's how Mississippi State's going to have to win this game. Not necessarily Davon Smith and ones, but just role players having career scoring type nights because it's clear that LSU is going to take away Stewart and Molinar. If those guys can't get it going, can't soak your head. Guys like Smith are going to have to keep scoring some buckets because LSU is, you got to understand, LSU is a top 10 offensive efficiency team in the country. So to think you're just going to shut them down for a whole half is probably not going to happen. Another one from close range for Andre Hyatt, the 6'5 sophomore from the Bronx. She's got to show more resistance. I mean, LSU's had three really good looks to open this game. Poor defense. Stewart, no. Now one for four tonight. Open this second half, I should say. But uh, nevertheless, they are sharp on offense. Watford slips the screen. Oh, nice look away and then puts it up and in. He's really good. He gets in there under control, has a nice floater to him, and a skilled passer. So good for his size. Matches their largest lead. As Stewart misses again, and then a foul on the rebound. That'll be on Watford. And that will be his second. Just out of rhythm. I mean, Stewart, I think he's had two pretty good looks. Uh, the first one was a little bit more contested, but that one wide open look from three. He just needs to see it go in. And Watford, like you said, Beth, the look away, a dude bit. And as soon as he saw that defense react, knew he had an easy two. Do and Smith, the two bigs, way out top. Now they'll settle into the lane. The double on Davon Smith and tipped out of bounds. It's tough. Just one on the shot clock, too. Yeah. So where do you go to get a good look? And Mississippi State likes to run Stewart off a lot of screens, but easier said than done against an LSU team that switches everything. So that action is a lot more guardable. Let's see if they just lob it towards the rim here, looking for a tip. And they will not get that shot up in time. You're an English major, Beth. Is guardable a word? Guardable is a good word. Can, can a can very go good that? word. Yeah. I, like I hesitated that word. on that, but I, I didn't really have a backup <laughs> plan, so I just went with it and figured I'd ask you on live TV. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the dictionary.com thesaurus on the phone. <laughs> Keep that handy. LSU a chance to take their biggest lead of the light night now. Oh, he's just playing with him now. I don't know why Smart gives that up. Good job by Watford. Get it back. Against the big man to do. Oh, the nice feed underneath. And Hyatt, a hot start to the second half. Yeah, that's just a great cut by Hyatt because he knew his man was looking to help a do out on the one-on-one -on -one basket. So Javante Smart's going to play with this thing up top. And Mississippi State's going to get caught ball watching. LSU pulling away early in this second half over Mississippi State. They are on the bubble right now, according to Joe Lenardi's bracketology. Let's move up to the uh, to the top, Beth Mowens and Dane Bradshaw, and talk about the ones and the twos. And a move by o Ohio State to get up there, and Alabama still on one of those top two lines. Yeah, Alabama still holding on. Unfortunately for them, uh, a loss at Missouri is not necessarily a bad thing on your resume. I thought from the eye test, their, their comeback in that game 
showed a lot of fight for them to say, hey, they played their worst offensively and they were still in there at the end. I thought that did a lot of good from an eye test standpoint for Alabama, but make no mistake about it, from the SEC's perspective, if they can get a one seed, Alabama is their one shot because I, I just don't think that Missouri's going to be able to have the SEC record that Alabama's could possibly do it at 15 and 1 if they can get their act together offensively. You see the three Big Ten schools listed there. No surprise with Gonzaga and Baylor as one. This is Tech. I'm sorry, Beth. Uh, Trendon Watts yep. just self inflicted wounds. i seen him do this in other games before. He, you know, he, he big bodies him down low. And look, he, he's going to do this. The guy's looking, Tolu's looking for a charge. He's going to place it right on him, right in front of the ref. They did this at Texas Tech cost his team and he's done it here and you just got to control it and uh, look i mentioned wanting to wear that bad boy image on you but do it have a chip on your shoulder without costing your team points back in a moment Got a Thursday college basketball doubleheader for you on ESPN. First from the Big 12 with Kansas and Iowa State. The Jayhawks have lost five of their last seven. Rallied to beat Oklahoma State the other night. And then the second game of the evening, Oregon and Arizona State. Oregon right now, according to Joe Lenardi, one of the last four in. They will take on the Sun Devils Thursday night, late night on ESPN. So a technical foul before the break on uh, Trendon Watford. And we're marking that spot. Uh, it is his third personal foul, but also obviously the free throws here uncontested for Mississippi State. Beth, I'm not even mad at the trash talk. I, I, I'm mad that you can't be uh, more thoughtful and creative in your trash talk. Like, he... he he bodies him up. He gets the, you know, gets the bump on Tolu Smith who flops. And to me, I'm waiting for Tolu Smith to run down the court next to me and say, get your weight ups, quit flopping. Bet refs aren't going to bail you. Like, you can say that stuff under your breath. You don't drop the ball in his lap right in front of the referee. It's, it's just a dumb tech. And I'm all for talking trash and being the bad boy of the league. That That's LSU's brand. But um, got to be careful. Don't cost your team. Oh, and the turnover. Nice takeaway here for LSU. And one. What a play by Cam Thomas. That's a big time response, too. They, they get in that zone again, and it's really disrupted Mississippi State. Beautiful pick by Cam Thomas, and just when Mississippi State's trying to get some momentum off that technical foul, they give up an and one. And Fountain's played terrific all game, but that one, you got to find a way to foul him without intentionally fouling them and certainly not letting them get the end one. Thomas now with 16. So after they did a good job of taking care of the basketball for the first 15 minutes of the game, it, that's changed, and it's changed the scoreboard as well. 17 points off of turnovers, 18 fast break points. Smart trying to get some more here. Days with the rebound. LeBlanc tried to save it. Here comes Stewart. Where are Stewart and Molinar? Quiet thus far. Fountain will clean it up. Thomas fouled on the drive. Beth, you asked about Stewart. When he missed that 10, 12-foot jumper in transition a couple possessions ago, that's when you realize, hey, it's just an off night because... He is money from that spot. It, it's just just one of those nights. Yeah, he and Mon are a combined three of 14. That is the first foul there on Stewart, and actually just the fifth team foul of the game on Mississippi State. Have not been a lot of free throw attempts to date. Days got another one. Darius with his fourth of the night from downtown. There's best player on the court, and there's most important player on the court, and Darius Days is the latter. I mean, he's been outstanding for this LSU offense. Good muscle work inside from Tolu Smith. He's just so physical down low. Does a good job just gathering himself. After you get the defender flop here, 
regather, realize, wait a minute, I got a guard on me. Let me finish through this contact, get an and one. Is it possible he heard your trash talk up and down the court, Dan, after you told him to get his weight up after yeah. <laughs> the technical foul? You see, that, that that's that's how tough I am. I, I tell guys to get their weight up <laughs> virtually 700 miles away. <laughs> I'd be pretty good on Twitter trash talk. Days, he's feeling it. Oh, just short. Davon Smith just took a lick on a screen, though. A uh, ball screen up top, and that's where you got to call it out for your teammates. Check out Smith here. He's going to try to get through this screen. I'm not sure he ever saw it coming. Nobody calls it out. Boom. LeBlanc. Legal guarding position, but somebody's be up. got to be up there yelling, screen right, screen right. Good cut to the bucket for D.J. Stewart, and a nice find by the big fella. You want to get the lid off the rim, that's how you do it, T.J. Stewart. Oh, may have gotten away with a walk, Eric Gaines instead picks up the assist to LeBlanc. Yeah, Mississippi State on the season is a really good defensive team but I just feel like they have given up way too many baskets to this LSU team even that time in a scramble situation LSU finds a way to get right at the rim Molar mid-range gets the bounce all right back-to-back -back buckets for Stewart and Molinar Smart off the bounce. Oh, he had free reign to get to the rim there. He's got a variety of moves, and he loves the step back, and he can hit you with the hezzy, but that one's just a straight line drive to your right. Uh, again, that's exactly why LSU's shooting 60% in this ball game against a very competent Mississippi State team not performing on the defensive end tonight. 13 points, 8 assists for Smart. Post fouled on the drive. As I mentioned, if you want to get the lid off the rim, do it with a Mississippi State tonight. How about a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch? And it features Tennessee's John Fulkerson, the only player from the SEC named to the midseason top 25. His numbers on the year. He was a, a part of the Tennessee win tonight over Georgia. Uh, Fulkerson. Hadn't really found his groove in the second half of the season so far. Was really came on strong towards the end of last year. Had an epic performance at Kentucky. One that Tennessee fans will remember forever. He led the balls and to win at Rupp. And that reputation carried over into the preseason. Started off pretty well as the balls had a perfect non-conference slate. But uh, right now. Fulkerson's just lucky that he, he's got his freshman and, and a couple other guys on his team carrying the load offensively. Everybody has a slump during the year, so it's nice to have some depth on your team to allow you to recover from it without feeling the burden and your team taking a bunch of losses. Yeah, that uh, win for Tennessee gets them to 7-4, and four, so they pull into a uh, third-place tie with Arkansas, and... Uh, it may be about to become a three-way tie. Look at the shocker going on right now at Ole Miss. They are rolling Missouri. Little hangover after they beat Alabama. And Ole Miss laying it to them right now. Yeah, I did not think Ole Miss would be able to pull off a third consecutive big-time win. They beat Tennessee 52-50 at home. The road win you called in the overtime against Auburn, and usually that takes such an emotional toll. But here they are saying, hey, everybody, it wasn't just about a good week. We're ready to have a good season now. Watch out. That could get them to 500 in the league if that stands. Still uh, over 10 minutes to go. And I stand corrected uh, with this score here. LSU could also bump up and make it a four-way tie for second place. That would put everybody three games down on Alabama with uh, six left. And for Alabama, they do not have a ranked opponent remaining on their schedule. Only one team with a winning record 
left on their schedule as Mississippi State starts to make a little move here. That's where LSU's got to be careful because Mississippi State stays composed. Uh, I had their game the other night. Nice shot by Smart. But as South Carolina made some big plays, some dunks, some threes, Mississippi State just hangs in there. And if, as Molinar starts to heat up a little bit, if his sidekick, Stewart, We'll see if this can't come go down to the wire for the Bulldogs. Yeah, they've hit their last six shots. And, and keep in mind, this is an LSU team that struggles to play 40 good minutes. But right now, here they are. Oh, that's a pretty pick by Eric Gaines, and he will be rewarded with the throwdown. And boom, right back up to nine. Just those empty possessions and the live ball turnovers will absolutely kill you if you're Mississippi State. They've scored almost uh, off of every one tonight. 19 points off of turnovers now. Molinar three. Got it. There you go. He's got 14 now in the timeout after the make. Two possession game, 9-19 to go. In a moment. Getting closer and closer to Champ Week and the SEC tournament looming. Of course, the top four get the double by Alabama. A two-game lead, and it looks like it may be about to grow to three with Missouri losing tonight to Ole Miss. And that's the way the standings shape up now with a few weeks left. Of course, uh, still headed to Nashville, still... Uh, Expecting to play the SEC tournament. The Big Ten did make the announcement this week that they are going to move their tournament from Chicago to Indianapolis, which will also be the site, of course, for the NCAA tournament this year. And some decisions to be made by conferences and uh, coaches and commissioners about uh, what will happen as we get closer to the postseason. Make sure everybody is safe to go into that NCAA tournament bubble. And so now during the timeout, there was a technical foul on the LSU bench. So one on the bench tonight, one on a player, Trendon Watford, tonight. And the missed free throw from Molinar. Beth, you have the lead on the road with a quadrant one opportunity that you desperately need. Stop. Just stop. Do your thing. Like, just, <laughs> you don't have to. Try to be the toughest guy with with your mouthpiece, man. Just whoever's doing it, just come on. Watford had not, one earlier, uh, and who knows what was said on the bench. But. Yeah, we are not in the house, so we don't have the up-close uh, and personal view of what took place. You know when you got the kid in class that has, like, so much potential, and you have the parent-teacher conferences, mm. and they tell the parent, like, if he would just apply himself and stay focused... He could have straight A's. <laughs> Come on, LSU. You've got all the tools. Well, they've been up by as many as 10, and Mississippi State has been able to creep back in a few times here. Beth, I do think one of the things that can hurt, when you're such a good offensive team the way LSU is, if you give up a, an offensive rebound or you give up a couple points with a silly tech, it, you, you have the confidence, oh, we can get that back anytime. And they, they've got to kind of get that out of their system. Just because they're so talented offensively doesn't mean they're always going to be able to make up for it. They did respond okay to the uh, technical earlier tonight. Let's see how they respond here. It's Bill Armstrong, assistant coach Bill Armstrong. I don't know if that's getting mad at his players for getting a tech or if something he said was overheard in the huddle. I'm but they did call it on the bench, if I'm not mistaken, right? So it wasn't a particular player. Yeah. Oh, pretty inbound there. The delivery from Smart to Watford. Boy, that Watford's assist been number around nine the tonight. Excuse me, Beth. Yeah, when he's been around the basket, good things have happened, whether he's a facilitator or a scorer. It's been more of Molinar in the second half. We haven't heard much from Derek Fountain, their leading scorer with 15 in the first half. Molinar feeling it. 
Wow, another air ball, but right there to catch it is Tolu Smith. LSU's done a pretty good job against Mississippi State, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country, but it's hard to box out on an air ball. Smart thought about it, passed on it. Thomas, I can't tell if that was a shot or he's trying to drop it off. Either way, a breakout and a throw down. Ooh, Davon Smith. Goodness. All right, Smith. They woke him up. He was a little mad about that, that screen they hit him with earlier in the game. Five points since the technical foul. They have hit nine of their last 11 shots to cut this to three. Smart, tough on the fade, oh, and he gets God. it. I mean, the, the step back, a little bit of Dirk Nowitzki, the one-foot fadeaway. He can get what he wants when he wants. Javante Smart, top guard in the league. 18 tonight. Here's Fountain. That won't go. LSU comes away with it. They have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe tonight with the best rebounding team in the league. Thomas, a lot mm. of time to see that one go. And a quick timeout for LSU. Davon Smith trying to keep the Bulldogs in it. The little fella saying, I bet you thought I was going to lay this thing up. Huh? Don't jump. Not getting the attention he deserves. But you give me Javante Smart, and I feel pretty good about my chances of winning. This guy's a sensational scorer, makes good decisions, good assist to turnover ratio. And he has gotten better every single year. Beth, when you think about what he's gone through in his three years at LSU, when he gets to LSU, they have a tragedy where Wade Sims, a teammate, is killed. Then the investigation happens to LSU where his name is linked to, to tapes and all the other stuff that goes on, and you got to deal with that as a young player. Then your season gets canceled with a pandemic, and you're going through all this other stuff now in your third year. And what's Javante Smart done through all that? Just get better work and get better. I, I think he's been phenomenal for LSU. Yeah, we talked to Ben Howland. Uh, his name was the first that came up. Got to deal with Javante. He's been such a terrific decision maker as Smith gets the offensive rebound. And let's see, who do they charge that to? Is that on days? And that will be his fourth personal with 640 still to go. Well, I mentioned Mississippi State is not going to go away, and, and D.J. Stewart can't go away either. You miss an open shot, but your team needs you. You just got to keep shooting when you're that good of a scorer, hoping that eventually one will fall. Still a lot of time left. Tolu Smith knocks it down. They are 7 of 11 from the line tonight. Nineteen point seven boards. He's looking for twenty right here. And he is now the leading scorer on the evening. And off nine for ten. I'd say that qualifies as efficient. Mm. Big man's putting in some work. Smart. Oh, I look at him change direction again and go to that right lay-in on the left side. Yeah, we saw him a couple plays ago do a straight line drive to the right, but he shows you he can finish with either hand and so nimble, talented, good footwork. 20 and 10 is a pretty good stat line for Smart, and with him running the show, they are shooting over 70% here in the second half against a Bulldog side that, of course, prides itself on its ability to play defense Second best in the league, holding opponents usually to just 39%. Beth, we touched on the first half as this game was coming down to the end of the first half, and it was 40, 39, somewhere around there. We said, look, Mississippi State better start playing some defense because if their star players can't get going offensively, I don't think you can rely on Derek Fountain to give you 30. And that's been the case. This game has totally changed in LSU's favor in terms of pace of play and, and offense. Oh, are they going to count that? 
LSU is pleading with the officials and one and one. And it doesn't look like he's gonna get it. Yeah, I thought the ref was pointing to the ground. Uh, Ooh. He was in motion there. Mm -hmm. I could have given him that. It, it was just such a long step. I think it caught the ref off guard because they called it on the on the floor as he took his first step. Yeah, they did give it to him. Good. I'm glad I corrected the ref yes. and he made it all the way down to the floor and <laughs> they got it right. Your reach is long tonight. <laughs> we got five and a half to go. Molinar. Oh, Smith telegraphed that one. LeBlanc. Good anticipation and then a roof razor. You're right. Devon, Devon Smith just one too many dribbles there. I mean, the pass was there. He took one too many dribbles into the paint to DJ Stewart. DJ Stewart's open on this play for the three. And Smith's just going to over penetrate and LeBlanc sniff that one out way ahead of time. And another technical foul has been assessed here. Is this on LSU for that <laughs> celebration? Uh, you can't help wow. but laugh, right? I mean, three technical fouls all, all in the second. Is this all in the second half, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it was the arm gesture. We, we didn't hear anything else from the LSU bench. I'm okay with that, but as long as it wasn't a taunting, you're staring at the mm -hmm. other guy. But, again, I'm all for the trash talk. I love it. I think it's part of the game. But LSU has to be smarter with the way they do it. And th this is not an anomaly of, okay, we got caught one game. No, this has been part of their season. They're, they're an emotional team. They talk a little trash. But they, they've got to do it. Much more could've, could've selectively been a, yeah. and, and cautiously. Could have been a reputational tech right there. Because you know when the roof is on fire, I mean, you limited <laughs> options. Back up to a nine-point advantage, and we are under five minutes to go. A dude lost the handle. It's 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 the live ball turnovers right it's 21 points off of 11 turnovers six of those are steals for lsu well and that immediately coincides with 24 fast break points for lsu those are off the turnovers for the most part so that's giving you those easy twos on the other end and it's 24 to 8 fast break points and so much of that can be pointed at those points off turnovers the live ball ones that that you just mentioned Turnover number 12 right there. Only seven of their last seven field goals. How about that? Who, who does that against the Ben Howe and Mississippi State team? And this LSU team is so talented on the offensive end. And But they've shared the ball more than usual tonight. 20 assists on 35 yeah. late baskets. Typically, it's more individual plays. But uh, they've been sharing the wealth a little bit this evening. They have. Well, I think Watford was expecting that to be a backcourt and able to corral it eventually. Shot clock is down at five. Thomas from the logo, and he's fouled on the three. Well, you earn that type of respect if you're Thomas. I mean, he's shown this sort of range throughout the season. Not many guys can get this much respect from 35 feet out, but Adu knows you better get a hand up and just does not give him a good enough place to land. And, and Thomas's feet typically land a little bit further in front of where he takes off, so it, it can be tricky for a defender. It's easy for him to come down on your feet because of his landing spot. And now Thomas joins Javante Smart with 20 points. It is the 13th time in 18 games 20 or better for cam thomas the sec's leading scorer i think the biggest story here for lsu's offense is everybody knows they've got star power but can they all put it together within the same game and tonight that has been an emphatic yes days has been terrific wadford has been great thomas and smart you mentioned both over 20 and it's been rare for them to get that sort of play within the same game 
Tyler Smart, it's been SEC Player of the Week type numbers with the double-double, 20 points, 10 assists. Offensive rebound, and then the extra step from Tolu Smith. Under four minutes to go, and LSU trying to close it out up 12. Of course, 12 was the, the lead on Texas Tech with under a minute to play. Scoreless in the last four and a half minutes for Mississippi State. We'll take the timeout. Tonight at the hump, LSU in control. Saturday over on the SEC Network, our full day of college hoops is capped off by Texas A&M. And uh, hopefully the Florida Gators will be off of their pause on Saturday night, 8.30 Eastern. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. So many disruptions this year in college basketball and SEC has seen their fair share. You mentioned Florida Gators and you talk about adversity. They've, they've dealt with COVID and the big time scare of Keontae Johnson, not only emotionally after he collapsed on the floor, fortunately he's okay, not playing yet, but uh, you deal with that emotionally, but then also you got to do it strategically. What's our offense look yeah. like and change up some things? And I think Mike White is, has really done one of the best coaching jobs in the SEC this season. And with Missouri's stunning loss tonight to Ole Miss, it was a blowout for the Rebels. You've got five teams now with four losses, so that makes those matchups um, Missouri-Arkansas on Saturday and Tennessee-LSU. Those are huge we got to get our boy Lenardi to give us an old Miss update. I mean, yeah, yeah, the, the, the record doesn't look great, but you just picked up three straight quad one type wins. Uh, you had the Tennessee, I'm sure it was a quad one at Auburn, I believe would be, and then certainly against Missouri. Kermit Davis getting it done right now. That is huge. They, they still have Mississippi State on the schedule. They'll have a rematch at Missouri at the end of February. And all these teams have just had inconsistent play and boy no inconsistency from cam thomas tonight but just been been an odd year old miss has had their ups and downs starting to hit a streak and i think this mississippi state team despite their play tonight is certainly capable of that but uh not without their defense that's their dna and when it goes missing uh, they, they just aren't nearly as competitive as they need to be they have been shooting their way out of their recent slump have the tigers and uh for a team that is outstanding in the lane and at the free throw line, how about 10 three-pointers instead tonight? And I think a lot of that has to do with how well they shared the ball. Uh, again, this is a team that's top 10 in offensive efficiency in the country. You typically think, oh, that team shares the ball. Oh, no, they're 323rd in the country in assists mm. per field goals made. But tonight's been a different story. I think that's where you see such a high percentage on the three-point shots because typically it's Cam Thomas, Javante Smart taking them off the dribble even though they're they're certainly capable but when guys like Days are picking and popping four of six Hyatt even got in the mix some good looks for LSU all night long 21 assists on 36 buckets so nearly 60 percent of their baskets have been assisted as you see their remaining schedule well, that, that'll be one of the highlights on Saturday now against Tennessee on ESPN2. Yeah, and that'll Tennessee, be, uh, that'll be the really 2 o'clock game. Yeah, yeah. Keon Johnson, Jaden Springer, those two freshmen playing really well. Eve Pons was out for Tennessee tonight. I, I would suspect he'll be back for that game, uh, reigning defensive player of the year. But LSU has the horses to go with Tennessee. I think they are just as talented. It's just about chemistry and getting those things coming together and that that is that's that is the game to watch you're right Springer had 30 in the win tonight against Georgia and they're here this evening at uh, Humphrey Coliseum how about 25 for Cam Thomas for Javante Smart 20 points 11 assists to lead the way Watford and Days also in double digits and uh, 
Darius, by the way, in his return from injury, a double-double. 14 points, 10 rebounds, and a look to add to it right here at the line. And you got the two double-doubles. Darius Day's no turnovers. And Javante Smart, 11 assists, two turnovers. So um, this LSU team with only eight on the night done a really good job. Fountain had that one taken away. The other big story, of course, is the 24 points off of turnovers. Smart and company doing the job getting out and running 24 fast break points. The only blip, uh, the three technical fouls tonight. Oh, nice look. And another assist. Thomas down low to Days. I tell you, if they can start doing that, they're, they're a next level offense. They're already one of the best. But if they start looking for each other and everybody has to respect their one on one game, I, I think that, that could be the next step in the evolution of this already extremely talented LSU offense. Well, and I think they're going to pat themselves on the back, too, when they check the stat sheet and see D.J. Stewart off of his 29-point performance against South Carolina. They hold him to five on two of eight shooting. Days, look at him still scrapping for the rebound. We highlighted it early in the game. I mean, this is uh, an LSU team that is completely different when Darius Days is playing well and when he's healthy. When he's not, they, they just aren't the same. He is the ultimate glue guy, and he is the difference between them being an NCAA tournament team and not. Thomas, no, but Watford, yes. Well, I think Watford's really quietly had a huge impact on this game. 14 points, 7 of 14. Uh, I thought his, his playmaking ability, though, and his, his passing and decision-making was, was really good. Just three assists, but uh, at the same time, I thought he just made the right read over and over again with the exception of a couple pull-up jumpers I thought he settled for in the first half, but got back to his bread and butter. Final minute here in Starkville. Timing error. Timing. Talking about a timing error. Well, with 17 points and one minute left, let's hope it's not an increase in time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to put this one in the books. Mm. Uh-oh. They put 597 on the clock. I oh don't know boy. what that means. There we go. That's it. Terrific team effort for LSU. Four guys in double digits led by Cam Thomas with the 25 tonight. Double doubles for Smart and Days. Tolu Smith, he's been a bright spot. 24 and 10 for Tolu. He's only missed one shot all night. Like that'll be it for Darius Day. 16 points, 11 rebounds. And for LSU, they'll improve to 12 and 6, 7 and 4 in the league. Mississippi State will fall to 11 and 10, 5 and 7 as Fountain connects. He will end up with a nice spot. night. 20, yeah. yeah. That's a heck of a career high. They just couldn't get enough in the second half. But 80 points, you got to be happy with that output, but you cannot give up. 62% from the field, LSU mm. getting everything they wanted offensively. LSU with the win on the road over Mississippi State, 94-80, to your final.